Roy after after the game all night, Cam and Kenny both said that they knew they played poor defensively in the first half, lack of intensity in the halftime. While you did get on them, they kind of knew as a group that we can't do this anymore. We did it early in the year, we can't do it now. Have you seen that type of growth, kind of ownership there? I think they've taken more ownership completely on the defensive end of the floor than they were early. Earlier, I felt like I was down on my knees, begging, scolding hitting them over the head with the broom, whatever it was, every single day. Uh, and I've seen some improvement. Uh, you know, I got on at halftime the other night because, you know, one of the things that we do is we spend a lot of time making out a scouting report. And if we spend that much time and make out a scouting report and say, this guy can shoot, then don't test him. We know he can. <laughs> and so I got on a great deal the other night about following what we told you to do. And I think they were much better in the second half. Uh, you know, Battle uh, has not been a great shooter from three-point line in the second half. I think he made three or four or something like that. Uh, but I think we did get out to Hughes a lot better than we had in the first half, to say the least. Coach, kind of along that, um, other than the defense, as we flip the calendar towards March, is this team kind of rounding into what you have envisioned it to be, or do you still think there's more room to grow or much room to grow? Well, I'll answer it two ways. I never really do plan out where I think you should be. I, I say that a lot, but I really never do. Uh, but we try to work every single day to get better, and I think we have gotten better. But I think the second part of the question, I definitely think we can get a lot better on the defensive end of the floor. Some of the breakdowns we have, we I turn around to the bench and look at my guys, uh, coaches or players, and one game I turned around and one of the players said, we have no idea. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. So it's it's got to be total concentration, 100% of the time that you're out there on the court and taking the information we give you on a scouting report, put that to use, and then do the things that we practice every day. Uh, but I do believe that we can get a lot better defensively. Yes. Is there an element specifically defensively you think you guys have made the most great on as a unit? Uh, no, uh, I think it's you know it's not like in golf. You know, your chipping is different from your driving. You know, but in the defensive end of the floor, staying in front of the ball is a lot different from boxing out, but it all goes together so much. Uh, um, I still say probably staying in front of the ball is, is, is the biggest thing, but that's the hardest thing nowadays. I mean, kids can do so much with the ball, and, uh, you know, the palm and the ball is never called, and they do it a lot, and so it's, it's almost impossible for – a good player not to be able to get you into the lane because you just can't stay in front of him. But that's still the thing we need to work on the most. When the players were spoke back in November and December mainly about some of the defensive issues, they always brought up communication. Is that an area that you've seen uh, a lot of improvement in? No, but I'd say again, a little improvement. I mean, you guys, a lot of people say, you know, boy, you've gotten a lot better defensively. Did you watch what the crap I watched the first half <laughs> two, three nights ago? I don't think you could put that in that area. So I don't think we've gotten a lot better, but I think it's daily, 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 we've gotten a little bit better and a little bit better. But uh, I think talking is one thing that we've emphasized a great deal all year. And uh, we'll do really well on two possessions and the next two possessions. I mean, I screamed at, uh, I think it was uh, Cam and Luke. You know, two seniors and uh, been here plenty of, you know, a long time and still not be able to get all they had to do was talk. If you talk, there's no problem. And I think that's one of the things we've emphasized uh, so much more this year than any other things. Uh, are Sterling, Manley, and Luke Black in their rehab process and could they return before the end of the regular season? Uh, Sterling practiced uh, full court yesterday for the first time. And uh, – uh, Leakey hasn't practiced half court or full court. Um, and now it's a tough situation, you know, because you've got to be significantly better or I'm not going to put you in there. I mean, it's the bottom line. It's uh, the, what's best for that team may be the, what we already have and the rotation we have, the minutes we have. So you, if you're going to try to come back at this time of year, you'd better be coming back really good. And that's just a fact of life. But uh, – I, I don't anticipate – anticipate, that's really good. I don't anticipate playing uh, Sterling uh, tomorrow. And Leakey, of course, we can't play full court. You can't even practice, and he's definitely not going to play. But I think with uh, – Sterling's closer than Leakey, and yet Leakey looks good. He's not limping anymore, but he just has some strength issues in that foot. How does Sterling handle sort of being out this long with something that – 
it, it seemed like a minor <coughs> thing at first, and it's clearly, you know, something that's bothered him longer. How's it sort of handled? I think know? he's handled it pretty well, but it's, got, it's really discouraging, too. I mean, you know, he's, I don't know how many games he's missed. 16. 16 games. I mean, my gosh, you know, that's not just like taking a week off. And so I know it's been discouraging for him, and it's uh, put him in a bad mood about life and all those kind of things, but it's what it is. Uh, it's hard. Uh, but he can handle it probably better than other guys because he's been hurt before. You know, he's had two broken legs, so he knows a little bit more about it than the other guys do. Uh, but it's still, it's not easy. And you work in the off season, you work in the preseason to go through the running program, the weight program, and all that to get ready to play. And then all of a sudden, you're not playing. And if you're not playing for 16 weeks, that's a, I mean, 16 games, that's a long time. Well, we're kind of building off that answer. How happy have you been with? Garrison Brooks. It seems like he's kind of coming to his own in the time that Manley's been out. So how happy have you been with him, you know, coming in and, and having to obviously play more minutes without Manley, but just his overall game in general? Well, I think he, he came along in the preseason because while Sterling was here, Garrison still got to start because he had, was more reliable, more steady. You know, you can put any words in there that you want. Uh, these guys trust him. He's talking more uh, defensively, doing a nice job there. Uh, so he's just more solid, uh, but he has gotten a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And the, uh, you know, if you win the defensive player of the award, defense player of the game award more than anybody else, you know that means that you're being pretty consistent. And I think he uh, won it again in the uh, Syracuse game, and so that's like eight or nine times. On a guy like uh, Sierra Little, a lot of times when they come in highly talented like that and they start off slowly. They don't put it together until the next year. Well, what about him uh, this year that you saw that he, he's, he's come out strong at the end here? Well, he was really coming, I think, really well. And I can't tell you which two games they start running together a little bit. But he played uh, 23 minutes, 25 minutes, and two straight games. And all of a sudden, he gets hurt three different times. And so that was uh, – he took a giant leap backwards at that point. Because after those two games, I thought that his minutes playing time would probably continue to increase to get up there where there'd be the, no question about who the top six guys were. But uh, uh, spraining his ankle, getting hit in the sternum, uh, you know, getting poked in the eye the other night. I mean, it's it's been a hard time for him. And it seems like every time he turns around, it's some other little uh, thing that it's not doesn't mean that he can't play, but it means he can't play at the highest level that he thinks he can, and, and we do also. But, uh, uh, yeah, some freshmen, some sophomores, some juniors, some seniors don't get it until, until their senior year. But uh, I was really pleased, not satisfied by any means, but I was really pleased with uh, how he was coming. And uh, a couple of games there, his defensive grade for like six straight games was uh, positive. And, uh, and it's it's all taken a back seat now because of a little nagging injuries. When you watched the film of him the other night, he didn't necessarily flash like a like the Florida State game, but it was kind of a work when like he was on the boards, he was hitting free throws. What did you see on film and like the, in the last game in particular? Same same thing that you said. He wasn't as into it mentally on the defensive end of the floor as he had been there for those again four, five, six games in a row before he got hurt. Uh, but. Uh, Seven out of eight from the foul line. You know, he was two for six or two for seven or something like that from the field. Missed a couple of shots. That, I mean, he had two outside shots. He's been making those in practice. But, no, I thought that he started to come back and then he gets poked in the eye. I mean, he was, he was really red. The good news is where it was all red was not in the spot you worry about the most. It seems like he's handled all the – you know, outside expectations, worried more about his own. He seems like a pretty insightful kid as far as handling this stuff. He's been absolutely phenomenal handling all that stuff. I mean, it's just amazing, and he's really handled it well. He wants to get better, thinks he is getting better, knows he has to get better on the defensive end of the floor. was really excited uh, for six straight games. I think it was six straight to see that he had a, a positive grade for six straight games defensively because it was, a, it was an ugly scene before that. But he... He really has just uh, handled it so so well. It's been amazing. Steve, Steve said that we have seventh next after you. What areas has he? Have you gotten fairly comfortable with him out there on the court? And maybe a couple of things you're still pushing him a little harder. Yeah, I'm still pushing the same thing. Stay in front of the ball and don't turn it over. If you stay in front of the ball and don't turn it over, uh, it's what you need to do on offense and defense both to be a point guard. And he's given us some really good minutes and. 
gave us some really good minutes in some games where Kobe was struggling a little bit. Uh, he's another one that started out the season, uh, was really just getting better and better and better, and then he hit a lull there for a little bit of time as well. But his whole career has been hurt until this year, so it's been a big challenge for him to – he hasn't played this, this, this long into the season without having to take some games off. What point did you notice um, Cam was moving a lot better after the surgery with his hips? Yeah, what was the first part of your question? At, at what point did you oh, first okay. notice? Oh, it's, it's easy to just watch him on defense and watch him run. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to, for us. It was pretty easy to see how much uh, easier it was for him. And he didn't have the grimace on his face, knowing that it wasn't comfortable. Uh, some of the drills in the past he struggled with that he hasn't struggled with this year. And I think it's helped him immensely. Can you tell me which drills in particular he struggled? The ones in <laughs> I mean, let's say it's just no, everything. Thing. Everything. Okay. I mean, if we're in the layup line, if we're passing, if we're dribbling, if we're in a defensive stance, I mean, if it's uncomfortable for you to move, it's, it's hard to play basketball. And everything we're doing requires you to move. And uh, he's just better at it than everything. And then the biggest thing in my mind is mentally for him that he's not not in pain. I mean, if if he gets to go up to the uh, the buffet line, I don't really watch him there, uh, but I watch everything else he does on the basketball court, and he's doing it more freely than he ever has. Coach, how important is a regular season title given what's on down the road for this for this team? Well, it's always been one of our goals, you know, and and we talk about it, but it's. Uh, um, it's just like the NCAA term. I always say, don't be looking down the road. Enjoy the journey. If you're looking down the road, that's where you're going, back home. And so just enjoy the journey and do the best you can every single day. But, yeah, we talk about it and have for 31 years as a head coach. What have you seen out of Clemson so far this season? Uh, very unlucky, and I hope it lasts another 36 hours. <laughs> you know, And Brad really does a good job, really does a good job. Defensively, they're really good. And uh, how about a guy that was like third or fourth in the league in free throw shooting, missing four straight free throws? That just doesn't happen. And uh, but very unlucky. Um, I can't remember all of them. North Carolina State, Louisville. They ended up winning by one. It, it, uh, it was looked. No, they yeah they lost by that one by one as well. Uh, they've lost two or three games by one and another game by two, and all of them a little weird. You know, so very unlucky is what I would like to say. I hope it lasts another 36 hours. What's the challenge with a guy like Elijah Thomas, who's just been pretty effective inside the Shooting 60 something percent, I guess I got the totals right here. 63 percent. We don't have anybody on our team shooting like that. Uh, he's got long arms, got great touch. He can turn both ways. Yeah, he likes to turn one way more than the other, but he can turn both ways. He can put the ball on the floor. He's a good passer. Uh, he uh, tries to make uh, passes, and some guys just don't ever throw it back out like it's a black hole. He can block shots, but he gives them a score. Uh, he's averaging 13, and uh, you know they're they're not they don't go up and down the floor as much as we do. But 13 points for them is is, is a good number. And again, shooting 63 uh, percent, and defensively he's probably I, you'd have to ask Brad, but he may be more valuable to him defensively blocking shots and rebounding than he has anything else, but he's having a really good year. Anybody else? Yeah, I wanted to ask you well, about Kenny. we got senior Nick Mike coming up next week. What's maybe impressed you most about him during this, this year? I know his shot hadn't been falling, but what yeah. other things has he done? Um, well, I, could, I don't know that I can just say this year because I just love him as a kid. And uh, he's handled a lot of injuries. Handled missing time, handled a tough start his freshman year, not making a three until the ACC tournament, and he just keeps coming back. He's very positive and enthusiastic every single day. He's fun to be around every single day. Uh, he's, you know, last year he had some stretches early where he'd score 15 or 18 the first half and then would take one shot in the whole second half. I said, I'd like you to do the same thing both halves. Uh, but this year it's been more difficult for him to. A uh, shot hadn't gone in as, as easily as it was going in for him last year. Uh, but defensively, he's uh, continued to take almost every game the best perimeter guy. And that might hurt his offense a little bit because he's expanding, using a lot of energy, exhausting himself a little bit on the defensive end four. Uh, but uh, you know, one thing I do like, it if you just take his pre-conference stats and then take his conference stats, 
his and, and which means you're playing better competition. His stats have gotten even a little bit better once we got into conference play, and I I think that's directly related to his toughness and his focus once we got into league play. He even raised it a little bit.